If you have Google button matrixes with ESP32 touch sensors and infrared sensors, you've hit the jackpot, my friend. So making a button box uh, for sim racing, and with that button box, I want to make a bunch of buttons that are actually mechanical buttons. They're just touch sensors, and that'll be explained further why in the um, build video for the button box. But uh, I'm going to use an ESP32 because it's got Bluetooth built in, so when it communicates with the PC, I don't need to have the unit connected directly to the computer. I'll just use Bluetooth to activate the buttons. And with the ESP32, as you may know or may not know, it's got touch sensors built in already. So it's sort of kind of the ideal situation where I can use those touch sensors to just you just touch it with your finger and it activates as, as a button. It's only got 10, or well the unit itself's got 10 sensors, which isn't much good to us really, because we want sort of 20 or 25 buttons to make it work, to have as many options as possible. So to get the best out of it, we'll build a button matrix, which uses sort of the way you line the pins up, or the inputs up, you can get more value out of each touch sensor. So looking at a diagram, just imagine these tan lines as, as copper tape and if you're in New Zealand um, you can get copper tape from JCAR this roll for $10 or you can go down to Bunnings and get this roll for $10 so what's happening is with this design is the we've got a bit of copper tape going across um, five other strips of copper and for a GPIO, for a normal switch, if I were to push a button here, there would be one input. Same for these ones as well, but here I've got it crossed across, so what I want is this GPIO and this GPIO. In my software, I'm going to tell it when those are both low, then that is going to be on, rather than just one of them being low. And you're probably thinking to yourself, that idea sucks because you're using one, two, three, four, five, six GPIOs to get one, two, three, four, five button presses. But it starts getting interesting when we add one more row. All we've done now is add one more sensor row, and we've got ten for the price of seven. So if we've got five across the top and five across the side, that's ten for the price of twenty-five. So we're winning. So for those limited amount of inputs that we've got, ten, we've got twenty-five over double out for our button matrix but that's when things start to get a bit hairy because although ESP32 should have 10 touch sensing IOs on the particular board that I've got two of those don't work so I've already lost two rows of buttons so if you've got the same board as I've got this comes up on the screen um, you'll notice that one of the touch sensors is missing altogether and touch two just doesn't work there's no reason for it, it's there, you can see it, but it just does nothing. So for my project, I, I built this up in this board. Yeah, it's just a bit of acrylic with the tape on it. And, it seems, and you've got your wires, and they're just, they're just aerials. So just imagine this whole thing is just a big mass of aerials. So anywhere along here, this wire could be touch sensitive. Um, and when you're touching it, you could false trigger and sorts of things, all sorts of things like that. So this is a really ugly way to do it, uh, but it did work. So I hooked it up, and as long as I avoided these wires and I touched on each one, it would be it would detect it pretty fairly well. There's some mist triggering of some of the other buttons. I kind of expected that, so I thought if I nailed down the design so it's nice and tidy, I could probably get away with it. But the problem being that I want to have I don't want to touch onto metal. I want to touch onto something flat like acrylic. This type of acrylic. And then have the LEDs behind. And then have the touch sensitivity. So the problem is that although capacitive touch should better work through anything, anything like this, as soon as I put it on, and this is probably just ESP32 specific, it doesn't sense it at all there's absolutely no it doesn't sense it and if you're really into your sim racing and you've got the racing gloves on it's definitely not going to work so this particular method although it'd be great if touch sensors would work we had no more bits and pieces we'd have to buy 
will be up and running, but it, it doesn't. So if you are building a solution that's using touch sensors for USB32, just bear in mind you're going to have to touch onto bare metal for them to actually work. So just by chance, I was watching a short and it came up with a, a signal analyzer from the 80s and it had a touch screen which used um, light beams around the edge because capacitive touch wasn't even being anywhere near close to being available back then. So you cross the beams and it decides exactly where you were pointing onto the screen. So the beam from the width will be shooting upwards and then if we add the signal for going across, there's our button matrix. And again, this is just five buttons for the price of six. And we can just expand this out just like we did with the copper. And we get our 25 buttons. So I made this um, sort of jig of a circuit here. It looks a bit Frankensteinish. Uh, so I've just got one row at the moment. So here on design I've got I've got the um, oops, flashing already. I've got the NeoPixel um, ring which I'm just testing for my design for the button colouring. Check out the short I made it about that. It's gonna be programmable so you can program any colours in. And here you can see it's it's hollow and as soon as I put my finger or well, like I was pushing a button, I push it in. One of the lights turns on, which corresponds with the button press. So what it is, it's got all the analog inputs on the SP32 and it's measuring the input from the infrared transmitter to the receiver and it's got an analog value and if the analog value drops below 10 it's definitely being pushed, it always just about always goes to zero and uh, when the light's going across the value is a little bit weaker because it's got a longer distance to travel but definitely in this this width it'll work and same in the other direction so as long as it drops down to zero it'll detect when there's um the button's being pushed and just have a look on the um, arduino screen as well it's just got this streaming out so when i push on the button it tells me five is pushed four three two or whatever uh so we've with the touch sensor we'd lost all those inputs so we could really realistically only have 20 buttons which is plenty right but with the analog inputs we can crank that out to 25 maybe even 35 but i'm going to stick with 25 that's enough i've got some other special features i want to add as well do i need to use all those io ports so crux is if you're using touch sensors on the sp32 uh, check some of those outputs actually work some of them might not and we're reducing it down and also it's, it does not work through any material at all you have to touch basically directly onto the metal going back to your USB 32 for a similar project that's probably fine but for mine um, I need a bit of acrylic in front and um, that will be revealed why in the build video for the finished um, button box if you want to see the completed button box, definitely uh, subscribe from wherever it is on the screen. And if you want to check out my other projects I've already done, which I've done a force feedback steering wheel, pedals, and a gear shift or manual gear shift, check out the playlist. It's around here also. Thanks for watching.